Shut up, compressor. So we are now approaching that point in the build when it is time to glue the wings together, top and bottom halves. Now overall the fit of these is pretty solid as we've already walked through. You know, you've got those big ass posts in there holding stuff together. That's kind of the main Okay, so now it's the... Okay, so now it's the second main event. Gluing the wings together, the top half and the bottom half. We've already got the gear bays glued in, they're good to go. And other than that, the fit of these is a, very much like the fuselage. Uh, solid at a macro level and a bit rocky at the micro level. So. As we've already noted, the posts in here, these you can see right down there, are fantastic at holding things together and really do help with sort of the structural rigidity of the wing in this area. The leading edge could certainly be better. Um, I find this tightens up a bit as you, you know, get in there and really push things together and. You know, focusing on the nacelles, you can kind of slide things over just a little bit. There's still going to be some alignment issues up front that are going to have to be dealt with uh, in some form or fashion. Fortunately, once you get past the nacelles, things seem to kind of calm down a bit, and the outer wing in particular fits quite well. Now, the nacelles themselves, they're okay. I'm having to keep telling myself we're going to have cowl panel or cowl flaps and things like that that are going to disguise some of the worst of what's happening. But these outer shapes aren't bad at all. Where it does get a bit rocky, and I have to remove the masking tape here, is this inner nacelle, as you can see, is basically if we want to prioritize the shape and fit of the wing root here, there's really no option to drag this piece further back. Maybe a tiny, tiny little bit, but that's not much. So before I start gluing, I'm gonna crack this guy open and see if I can change that a little bit. But before I get to that even, uh, one of the big questions about these kits that I've had to this date is how well the engines and cowls fit onto the nacelles. So in an abundance of caution before I started committing things to glue, I went ahead and grabbed some of the pieces. So this is an example of cowl flaps and the engine for one of the outer nacelles. And the way that these work and the way that they fit to the nacelles themselves is you basically, you know, you have the cow flap here, eh, it is what it is, right? You have the engine, also it is what it is. It's probably my biggest come down from 132nd to 148th is the engine detail falls off a cliff. Um, just like the Tamiya P47, there is no provision of any kind here for um, ignition wiring, and so I will have to add that. Fortunately, I think with the way the shape of this is constructed, this little ridge here, behind the crankcase cover 
could easily act as a ignition ring. So between that and maybe adding to it a bit, I don't know, with some lead wire or something, um, I can make a good facsimile of that and I can hide the drill out for the ignition wiring sort of around it because you're not going to be able to see much once it's in the cowl. Anyway, the way this works, the cowl flap is basically floating. Um, on the nacelles, it doesn't really come into play except right up here at the top and a little bit down here at the bottom. But you've got some ducting that gets in the way and stuff like that. What does happen is you can see this big post on the end of the engine with a little raised bit right there. This goes through cowl flaps and really needs to be locked down. And this is where things get a bit tricky because these cowl flaps, at least on this engine, want to pop up and go somewhere else, which really sucks um, because we're counting on ultimately the fit of the cowl flap and the engine to be pretty much perfect right back there because that is going to be key in locating everything else. Why is that? Because basically the engine is the locating mechanism for everything. The cowl flap locates onto the back of the engine and the cowl itself locates, you know, if you look here, you can see there's a little nubbin right there and there's another one over here and the cowl flap has, or the cowls themselves have corresponding holes for said nubbins and they just fit. So that is kind of the key mechanism, which is why it is so critical for the engine to fit the cowl flap properly. Because if you if it doesn't, then when you go to install this, and if the engine cowl flap thing is off, you're gonna have the, the cowls kind of flopping in weird directions. Nobody wants a floppy cowl. So, once this kind of thing is sorted, you come in here and you basically take that little ridge on the engine and these F34 and F35 pieces that we were fighting with, they have little notches in them, which is handy. So basically, the notch fits, blah, 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 and then the cowl fits right there. And as you can see, it has gone floppy because it is not tight a fit as we would like. So ultimately the key here is going to be getting the engines painted and done up and then gluing the fuckers to the cowl flaps. Um, there's really no other clean way to do this that I can see. And that's fine. Uh, it's going to maybe mess up painting order a little bit and I mean, I'm going to have to be a bit careful masking the engine and the cowls or I could always do the thing where I paint, you know, the leading edge and main elements of the cowl first. Uh, then I come in here after I've got everything glued and I just, it might be possible even to, uh, you can't really go cleanly through the back. Okay, well, so then it may mean painting the leading edge of the cowl, getting all that stuff sorted and then gluing and then just dealing with the outside. But the good news is these basically are entirely dependent on these two posts and the way they fit together so we don't have to worry about making any special provisions on the outside in order to fit the engines later on. Blah, that was long-winded. <laughs> okay, so what am I doing now? Well, as I noted, there's this register issue with the nacelles, right? There's also a very slight, slight overbite on the upper wing here. So I'm thinking that maybe if I can get in there and somehow, ow, this thing fucking hurts, man. So when you go to pull it apart, these little posts in here grab it really well with the result that when it does come loose, these little flat points back here, just, oh man, they sting. <laughs> they bite right into your fingers. Okay. So looking at what we've got here, we've got basically a little post nubbin right there and one right there. Um, I'm going to keep these probably, but I think what I might do 
see if I can open up the ones on the upper wing just a little bit. Because if I can open them, because if I can open them up a little bit, that can give me some slack and some slop, and I can move things around just a little bit. Okay, so I just said fuck it and cut off those two mounting posts, the one there, right there, so you can see it, <laughs> so the wing's not covering it. So right there and right in this corner here. I figure there's plenty of others in the vicinity. That'll give us a little bit more control. Now what is this? Back here on this trailing aileron, there's this big bump. Motherfucker. Ejector pins. All right, give me a second to deal with these assholes. Okay, so I've shaved off the offending ejector pin marks that were literally sitting right on top of where these things come together. Hopefully that will be an end to that business. Now what I typically do with a wing like this is I prioritize the shit that absolutely needs to go together nicely. So, good lord. I think on this one I might play it a bit differently. Focus on these outer wings first, because that will give us... They already fit together, and so that will give us an anchor point when we start yanking on other stuff. No going back now. Fortunately, the fit of the outer wing is really quite good, so we can just... The MEK do most of the work on its own. Okay, so back here we've got a little bit of a gap type thing that opens up. It's not really a fight, it was just kind of hanging open. So, so we're going to come in here. Okay, sorry for the smash cut, but I had to kind of take this um, away from the camera and sort of swear at it for a while and basically get it together because, as I have already said, it is macro great, micro a bit of a shit show. So, the main areas that were kind of of concern to me are still of concern because I'm going to have to deal with them in cleanup. Uh, this horizontal bisection of the nacelles is just not clean. Um, I don't really know of a better way to do it, although I would have liked to see some of these sort of Ford elements maybe as their own rings instead, but seems got to go somewhere. Unless Tamiya did this, in which case you would build the whole thing and it would just slot into this shape and everything would be super happy, but this is not that. So the outside there is pretty good. The inside of this inner one, I got as close as I could uh, while still being able to put it together. So that's kind of not going to be not going to be fun to deal with in cleanup. The other fun thing is these little openings here. Um, they don't match at all. 
I had to prioritize where I wanted things to line up. So I got this one mostly in place, which means in cleanup, I'm going to have to think about how to restore this, this, and this. And there are little insert pieces that go in here. And I'm going to have to think about how to make sure those fit and whether or not I'm going to need to you know, get in there and dig or whatnot. I also laid some CA right here just to lock it in place. If you look at the nacelles, I did the same thing over here and right here. Um, I don't have to worry about cleaning these up because they're going to be completely buried. You're never going to see them. This one will require cleanup, so we'll see how that goes. Um, out back, everything right in here was fine. I will never have to stab myself on these little hinge things again. And you can see it actually... Uh, actually did break the skin a little bit, so joy on that front. The aileron join was not great. That was probably the biggest pain in the ass. Uh, and something where I think it would be lovely to see them just do a separate piece. Um, I know that HK can do some pretty amazing shit with molds. I've seen their 132nd Mosquito with the amazing one-piece wing. So I figure if they can do that, they could probably figure out how to mold a single piece aileron that you could just drop in. Anyway, that is a wing. So I'm gonna let that sit for a bit, uh, give my hand a break. It is literally cramping from the pressure I had to put on some of these parts to kind of get them over a millimeter while the glue did its thing. Because there's really no good way to clamp anywhere on here. This thing is too big, too resistant, and I don't know any clamps that put down enough force. So, yeah. All right, I'll pick back up in a few moments. Okay, so after the shit show that was parts of the starboard wing, the port wing actually looks a little bit better. Specifically, this leading edge here that was out of register, hopelessly on the starboard wing, on this wing, when you push it together and you kind of slide it a little tiny bit, everything lines up nicely. These outer nacelles, everything is good. Detail is still good on the outer span of the wing. So what about the problem area on the starboard wing of this inner nacelle? It's not great, but it's also not off. So win all around. So let's go ahead and get this bastard glued together. I will say, if this wing had been as much of a pain in the ass as the other wing, there's a decent chance this thing would be shelved. <laughs> um, I'm obviously still working my way through it, but to be honest, this kit has been nothing but disappointing since I started working on it. Um, what started out really disappointing on the interior, I had hoped would fade once we got around to the outside, and clearly the sort of lazy slipshod, what almost feels like rushing it approach has not slacked off. And it honestly feels like the single best thing that can be said about this kit is the surface detail is gorgeous, uh, which it certainly is. But yeah, it's a bit frustrating when every other kit, every other element of the kit leaves you going, really? That's the best you're doing, so. Okay. So those are holding. Let's go ahead and do the outer nacelle here. So there's a little tiny ridge there, nothing too bad. I'm gonna have to come in here and fight a few battles anyway, so why not? At least this line right here fully lines up. That will make my life a lot easier. Alright, this one is going to take some force. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're happy with the... wing root edge first, right? This 
inner side of this this nacelle is going to need a little bit of cleanup too. There's a slight ridge right there. Fortunately, that one seems to be happy to fall on like smack in the middle of a panel, so those are actually usually easier to clean up because you don't have to worry about restoring anything. You just erase it. Because the fun part just holding this shit until it uh, decides to up enough to not cause me agony. Okay, so not the prettiest, but far from the ugliest. Let's go ahead and start working our way around the corner here. Okay, so this guy was kind of a piece of shit fit on the uh, other side. Let's see how it works out here. Eh, very Chernobyl-esque. Not great, not terrible. Okay, that wing is done, except for the cleanup. So all in all, that might have saved the build.